nice song. There's a song I wrote this year called I Believe. No matter how long I've been studying the Bible, I still take regular time and set it aside to ask myself the question, what do I believe? And this song is the result of that. Later on, we'll listen to the song in its entirety. But for right now, this is what I believe. I believe in the hope. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Greetings and salutations. Welcome to another episode of Coffee, the Bible, and Page. I am Page, your caffeine-imbued host, and here is my caffeine. In the beginning, coffee, and lo, it was very good. Well, today we're in Galatians 6, verses 6 through 10, and I'm going to confess something to you. I've been sitting on this passage of Scripture for a couple of days, just trying to find some way to connect it with the flow of the narrative that Paul has been giving us as he walks us through Galatians. He's been telling the Galatians about the false teachers, their teachings, the results of their teachings, the results of following the gospel of grace, all of that. And then he pivots and starts talking about giving. I could not figure this out. So let's get up to speed. In the first five verses of chapter six, Paul outlined how we as a spiritual community are to come alongside those who are carrying burdens that are too big for themselves to carry. We don't let them drown or be crushed under that weight. We come alongside them and we share that burden with them. Now, when I was going through bankruptcy years ago, 2002, I believe, absolutely one of the most massive negative experiences I've ever had. I had a six-figure salary job that I lost and I invested all my money in a video production company, which failed. For the first time in my life, I had no opportunities in front of me for work. I had nowhere to go. My wife and I scraped and we scrabbled that first year and did whatever we could. And for that first year, I think we made between ten and $11,000. That's it. Now, our break-even point was 21000 By that, I mean keeping the lights on, keeping the mortgage paid long enough so we could sell the house and pay off the bankruptcy. For that first year, our break-even point was $21,000. But we only made ten dollars to $11,000. I can honestly tell you that there are days I look at that time and I can't figure out how that happened, how we made it through. But we did. We made it because different people at different times came alongside of us and they shared the burden. There were times... When my daughter would come to our house while Glenda and I were out working, and she would make sure that the pantry was full of food. We had people give us gifts of money off and on. I don't remember any huge gifts, but it just seemed like when a bill was due to be paid, we found a way to pay it. And it was an amazing time as people came alongside us to share that burden. That year was our Galatians 6, 1 through 5 experience. That's kind of what Paul is talking about here. Paul says, but each one should carry their own load. And then he says, nevertheless, the one who receives instruction in the word should share all good things with their instructor. To me, that's confusing. The key word here is that word, nevertheless, at the beginning of verse six. It's what I call a connecting word. It connects the thought he is about to share with the thought that he just shared in verse five. See, you just got done telling the Galatians that each person is to pull their own weight. 
and implied in that instruction is that just because he told them to share the burdens of their brothers and sisters when that burden is too big for that brother or sister alone does not mean that that brother or sister can become a leech expecting to be supported by the community everyone is expected to pull their own weight nevertheless Paul says there is an exception that community spiritual teacher is to be taken care of that is food a place to live clothing etc pay your teacher this is to be considered part of the way you honor God now, how do I know he's talking about honoring God with all this so glad you asked that question we find that in verse 7 do not be deceived God cannot be mocked a man reaps what he sows why because verse 8 says whoever sows to please the flesh from the flesh will reap destruction whoever sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life so Paul is saying if the sole purpose of your income is to meet only your needs without concerning yourself with using it to share the burdens of others in this case specifically your spiritual teacher what does that say about you Paul says that this type of selfishness brings destruction. Everything you have spent your money on, for yourself, will, when you die, vanish. All the benefits of your money dies when you do. But every dollar you spend on others, in this specific case, your spiritual teacher, has eternal consequences. You've made an investment in every life that that teacher touches. You have an investment in everybody who becomes a teacher because of that teacher and so on and so on your giving or your lack thereof has eternal consequences everybody who knows me knows that i've been a professional musician but i've never been famous i've never been in any famous groups i've never made a huge impact on the world with my music i believe the reason for this is that music as important as it is has never been the thing in my life to be honest, the most important thing in my life is my family, my wife, and my children. One day I had a dream. I was standing in front of the throne of God. I was weeping because I felt like I'd really let God down because I hadn't lived my life in a way that made any huge impact for him. In my dream, I heard him say, Paige, I'm too ashamed to look up. I don't look up. And again, he said, Paige, I don't look up. Then I hear a very sharp voice from the throne of God, Paige! And I look up, and he's smiling at me, and he points off to his right, my left. And there to my left, I see my son and his wife, and behind them, generations of believers. Jesus says, oh, well done. Then he points to his left, my right. And I see my daughter and her husband. They don't have any children, but they spend their life and their money blessing people. They've supported families, missionaries, wherever they see a need. And my daughter and her husband are surrounded by the thousands of people that they have touched through their money and their efforts. And Jesus said, oh, well done. And I wake up. Turns out I was making a huge impact on my world because of the investment I had made in my children. So, if the sole purpose of your income is to meet your needs only, well, you might have benefits for a time, but when you die, those benefits go away. They're gone. I guarantee you that the benefits that I will reap from the fact that I have raised my children the way I did in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord will reap eternal consequences. The benefits of that investment of my time and money go on generationally. When God takes me home when I die, those repercussions continue that's what Paul's saying here if you sow to the flesh you reap destruction whoever sows to the spirit reaps eternal life your money and how you spend it has eternal consequences then he says in verse 9 let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up see the great hindrance to good sowing is weariness and waiting for the harvest four months elapse between planting and harvest but if the necessary preparation is done the harvest is certain okay I'm gonna stop right here and we're gonna listen to the song we heard a snippet of in the beginning and we're gonna listen to it in its entirety 
and then I'm going to come back and we'll wrap this up. I believe in God the Father. I believe in God the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe the three in one. And I believe in the resurrection. I believe in the empty tomb. I believe you rose to heaven. And I believe you're coming soon. I believe you died to set me free. When they hung you on that tree. I believe you rose on that third day, I believe. And I believe in your church. When we gather in your name. I believe when we lift our hands to heaven. We declare your kingdom's reign. And I believe in the virgin birth. I believe you were born to die. I believe you took my sin upon you. I fall to my knees and cry. I believe you died to set me free When they hung you on that tree I believe you rose on that third day I believe I believe you rose on that third day I believe We've just finished talking about the eternal consequences of our lifestyles. Paul is telling them to share with their teachers, that is, support their teachers financially. Their teachers should not have to do anything but teach. And as their reward, the body of believers will support them. I can do no better than the words of Jesus as he declares in Matthew's gospel about what sets true believers in him apart from all others. It's their giving. Matthew 25, he says, Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. And the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty? and give you something to drink. When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothes you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels because I was hungry, you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and didn't help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of these, the least of these, you did not do for me 
then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Mm. God will not be mocked. Paul concludes in verse 10 by saying, therefore, which is another way of saying, because of what I just told you, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. That word opportunity is really, that's, a, that's an important word, kairos. It denotes a particular time, a right time, the opportune time, the appointed time, a time that only occurs once before it's lost forever. When opportunity presents itself, give the order of priorities to the family of faith first. Take care of your teachers. Take care of each other. Give when opportunity presents itself. I always say that one thing math teaches us is that if we learn and follow the process, we will always arrive at the correct conclusion. Trust the process. Well, what's the process we're talking about here? Meeting the need of your teachers. What will the correct conclusion be? Eternal consequences. This is how we believers are supposed to be and to act. And it is one of the primary things that separates true believers away from false believers. What is the proper and appointed time to give? <laughs> now. As a friend once told me, learn to live with an open hand, not one that clutches at all that is quote unquote yours. In truth, everything we have comes from God. We should be quick to give it back. This is serious business. To act as if everything we have is ours is to be blind. God will not be mocked. Whew. I'm going to leave that right there. This is Paige. Here's my coffee. I'm out of here. Have a great day. Bye-bye. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to email me at page, that's P-A-I-G-E, at coffeebiblepage.com.